What's going on, y'all? What is going on, you guys? So we are back again for another what it is. And um, hmm, let's see how long this one will be. Girl, honestly, truthfully, like the news ain't been news and the um entertainment ain't really been entertaining. And I guess everybody kind of taking a break. Everybody took a break for this weekend, I feel like. Um, so they could uh, watch the Risa Tisa uh, situation. Who the f did I marry? You know what I'm saying? And um, it's understandable. It was a good little Netflix show on TikTok. That's basically what it was. But we'll talk about it again. Um, if you want to know my thorough talk, uh, thoughts on it, go to the video that I put up about it. Um, it's an individual video because it was a lot. It was a lot. But um, I hope everybody is doing great. Um, I'm doing good for the most part. And speaking of that video, let me just say I want to thank everybody who left positive comments on there because I feel like I don't even know, like that really wasn't even my intentions to go that deep with my own personal stuff um, and put my own personal business out there like that. But I did and I just, I don't know, something told me to just go ahead and do it. And, um, you know, it was received really, really well because I'm the type of person, if you don't know, I don't like to put too personal, like I put some things out, but when it comes to private stuff, whatever relationship stuff and all that, I don't want to go too deep into it and all that. And even some family stuff, I don't want to do that. I want to have some sense of privacy and security on that end. But for some reason, just listening to that whole story, it's like, ah. Uh, you want to be mad at the girl, and let's just go into it. You want to be mad 100% at Risa Tisa um, because of the simple fact that, again, she literally skipped over a lot of red flags. A lot of red flags. You meeting somebody off of Facebook dating. You move that person into your place after two weeks of talking to each other. Y'all have to live with each other at this point because of quarantine. And it's a choice that you made to move him in because you didn't want to be by yourself or whatever it was. Is this the beginning of a relationship? I don't know. I don't remember. But my whole thing is you got all of that. You get pregnant. He don't even show up to the uh uh, the, 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 the doctor's appointment where you have to get the DNC because you lost the baby. It was no longer viable. And he not showing you where he works at. He's talking baby. And I feel like I forgot this part. When I tell you, I cracked up. I was looking at Jay Lee's corner video literally right before I got on here and I was um doing my notes or whatever. Jay Lee had put up a video. She was like, girl, you know, I'm looking at this whole thing and it's like nothing about this is like really like, oh, I, you know, original or something like that. Like it's like mind blowing. And on the one hand, I get what she's saying because again, yes, there are a lot of people out here who get played. There are a lot of people out here who do the playing and who just play on people's emotions and try to use people, take advantage and all that stuff. But once you actually just look at it, and for me, it was the details. It's like to hear how somebody really, truly did this and how far that they would go. Like, yes, we know that people are out here scamming. We know that people are out here using this is a tell as old as time. It's just as old as prostitution, okay? You know, and so to know that, but then to actually get the full details i feel like that's what was engulfing people the actual details like oh, okay because we could have summed it up like i said in the other review for it we could have summed it up as this girl got played this man was lying to her the whole time about what he did baby <sighs> he was literally lying on dead family members that song was playing up in my head the whole time. I'm so sorry, y'all. I love me so Megan. But that that line, lying on your dead mama, that's so messed up. But the whole time I was listening to that whole, oh my goodness, it just kept playing. I kept dying on your grandmama, dying on your dead grandmama, lying on your dead grandpappy, lying on your dead daddy. Okay, lying on your dead auntie, lying on your dead uncle, lying on um people that you ain't even have. Girl, I was just like, what? You know, and that part was, I guess, for me, the whole ain't this some sh type of stuff, you know? And then it was like, the main part that kept sticking out to me was when she said, 
This man was talking on the phone for 30 plus minutes a day in a four month span every day to his brother and only for her to talk to his brother and to find out that him and the brother haven't been speaking since 2015. And he said, if I find the brother, I'm going to whip his ass because he owe money and something like that. I said, oh, my goodness, because this just goes to show how psychotic some people are. You know, I ain't no doctor. I ain't no psychiatrist. But, you know, I'm just saying something ain't right up there. Like he must get personality disorder um, and a lot of other stuff going on because Miss Lady said I would literally be sitting there with him and he on the phone. For like a good 30 minutes, just having a whole company. Hey, bro, what's up? Yeah, she right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just said what's going on. Oh, okay, okay. You know, you, I'm getting ready to go to work and all that. Oh, yeah, what y'all got going on over there? Oh, for real. <laughs> now, see, I can only go that far. I can only go that far if I'm faking it, right? Imagine doing this every day and having full-on conversations with yourself if there's somebody else is talking to you okay on the other end of the phone and they are not there that and, and then she said was laughing and everything i said so he making jokes and laughing at it he is literally laughing at the jokes in his head that is some crazy stuff and i'm just like what what this is this ridiculous the screenshots the fake accounts it was so many red flags. And again, it all boils down to people wanting love so bad that you just, or or I don't even know if she really wanted love. And you can't tell me that she was in love with him because, again, I'm the type of person that believe you cannot fall in love that quick. Uh, not after two weeks. This ain't no love is blind crap, okay? And I'm just like, girl, just, oh, my goodness. But one part that got me was when they found out that, you know, he found out a loophole after she kicked him out, right? She kicked him out. She got the divorce. It hadn't been finalized yet. She was waiting for it to be finalized for the judge to sign off on it or whatever. And so he finds out because he ain't had nowhere to stay. He was sleeping up in his car, all right? He was sleeping up in his car. He was still in the same clothes that she kicked him out in and everything. He looked a bum. He was funky and everything. And he found, uh, figured out that he could still stay in the house, which is her house. But since they're married, I guess it's now marital property. Um, but stay in the house until the divorce is finalized. And the divorce hasn't been finalized because the judge hasn't signed off on the chat. And so she talked to the cops and they basically said, yes, this is true. And I was like, well, I'm scared for my life or whatever. And it was like, well, just they gave she gave him the name, gave him the social security numbers, all that stuff. Did a little background check. Baby, come to find out. And see, this is where it gets scary. Okay, this situation is where it gets scary because the stuff that she was telling them about what he was doing and the reason why she kicked them out and why they're in the process of going through this divorce. And then it's like the law is on his side because technically because they're in Georgia, I guess he could still be up in the house until the divorce is finalized. That is crazy. That is crazy. So therefore, this is how I feel like the laws need to be. These, these type of laws or whatever, they need to be rewritten because if we're getting a divorce, I really feel like if you file for divorce, one of the parties have to move out the, uh, the, the, the house that y'all share together. That's just what it is for the safety of each other. That's what it is, especially if it's a domestic dispute and all that stuff, or whatever that's been going on. And then you got this woman saying that, you know, she felt like she was in danger. And yet you still saying that, you know, technically speaking, because of the law, he can't come back and stay in that house. Now, either you can put him in a different room and um, don't say nothing to him or you can leave the house or whatever until the divorce is finalized. I'm like, what? So he could squat up in that house and not take out? Girl, she said, if he come up in this piece, I'm going to just let you know because she was thankfully finna move. And she was trying to get that moving date pushed up, but it couldn't. And she said, he come up in this house, ain't going to be no utilities on. He ain't going to be able to wash his ass. He ain't going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, do anything he ain't gonna be able to see because the light ain't gonna be on the heat ain't gonna be on ain't nothing it's gonna be hot as hell because the air ain't gonna be on or nothing like that bitch they found out he had a warrant so when he did pull up he did pull up the cops pulled up on his ass too and then he come up that type of time i was just over here trying to get a tv from her for what 
You ain't got nowhere to plug it up at. You ain't got no internet access unless you going to the McDonald's with the free Wi-Fi because you living up in your house, I mean, in your car. Baby, when she did all of that and they came and arrested his ass, girl, she had his car towed. Come to find out that motherfucker had been back paid. Like, he had, like, months of payments that he did not pay. So, therefore, they was looking for the freaking car. And the tracker had we even went out. So, they couldn't find it to pick the car up. She called the company. She said, y'all can come out here and get this car right here, right now. Okay? They came early in the morning the next day. Repossessed that car. Mind you, all of his stuff is in there. Because that's what he was living at. I said, child. I said, Tessa. Tisa. Risa Tisa. That was the smartest thing you did this whole thing. You know, like, do y'all understand something like that was scar person? Like, I've been through so much. <laughs> As I mentioned in that video about my relationship that I just, you know, dealing with a person that I was dealing with off and on for the past eight years or whatever, eight years or so. Um, I it, it was a lot more stuff that was going on. Like, people have to deal with so much in relationships. And I don't even get upset at people who be like, Girl, I don't want to be in a relationship. And people that say, you know, I don't want to deal with all that dealings of the ins and outs of a relationship because it's just too much sometimes. That's why you got some people that just like to play around and do this with this person, that person, have a situation, come and go as they please. They ain't really obligated to nobody, whatever. Because sometimes these relationships, you they start off one way, you thinking they this and that, that, and then it's, it's totally ends up different. You get hurt. And I know you got to still step out on faith and not let things just get to you. But, like, for me, like, when I was in that relationship, do y'all know? I ain't even tell y'all this. I had to deal with the fact that her exes kept trying to intervene, was somehow got my number, and was calling my phone, uh, um on fake numbers and stuff like that, like the Google numbers and all that that you can make up and all that. Um, you know, friends coming in, trying to get in, you know, and sabotage the relationship. One friend literally tried to set me up and make it seem like, you know, they tried to flirt with me through social media and see if I was going to take the bait and then going to lie to her about it. And then she cussed me out. But then I got all the proof or whatever to see what was going on. It, it was a mess. And like I said, the ex is coming through, just bothering, um, hold on, bothering the situation. It's just, it was too fucking much. That relationship traumatized me so much. Like... I, I want to get into a relationship. I have to heal myself, but I want to get into a relationship and I'm going to know what it feels like to be in a real, real relationship that you actually is equal and you loving and all of that stuff. And it's unconditional. I want to feel all that. Right. And then also, like somebody said in my comments, it's also about the fact that, um, you know, you have, what is it? <clears throat> Friendships. There are friendships that are the same way. It don't necessarily has to be a romantic relationship. You have friendships that's out here that can be just as messed up and just as traumatizing and, and, and all of that stuff. And people can play you just like that because you really think somebody out here trying to be your friend for real, for real. And truth be told, they're using you. Baby, I experienced that too. And that's so unfortunate. Okay. And that's why I'm. Hold on one second. Let me put this plug in. Is it plugged up? Girl, it probably is. That's why it is so hard for me to, you know, um, really get close to people or like try to, you know, develop real connections, connection, even though I want it um, because I was scarred so bad. <laughs> and, it, and it be literally just one particular experience that I just mess it up. I was scarred so bad by experience that I had. And, you know, I was like, I just cannot believe people can do this. Like you people really come up into people's lives and you really think that they are there for you. They really trying to be your friend. And if 
it went out or whatever. I just plugged it up. That's just what that was. Okay, so don't worry about it. They really trying to be your friend or whatever. And then come to find out that's not what it is. They just trying to use you to get to somebody else that you have a little bit of communication with. And then, you know, they ice you out and lie on you. All it, it was crazy. It was crazy. And therefore, I just don't really trust people like that. And I know it's something that I have to work on and all that stuff, whatever. But, baby... Main thing is you got to love yourself first, okay? Because you can't let these motherfuckers just run all over you and ruin your life and ruin a good thing for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to... Can't let people stop you from living. But you also can't be so desperate. Can't be so desperate for love. Can't be so desperate for friendship. Can't be so desperate for opportunities or whatever. Because at the end of the day, you're going to fuck around and get the wrong stuff. Just because of your desperation, it's going to be messed up on your part. And you don't want that to happen, okay? But, um, Miss Risa T, so I'm going to just say this. At the end of the day, if they don't pick this movie, this stuff up and make it a movie, get Avery DuVernay on the line, get Issa Rae, get Will Packer. I would say Tyler Perry, but then Tyler Perry, he'll have to get some actual writers on the script, okay? He'll have to get some actual writers. I don't want him to write the script. Hell no. Okay, no shade, no shade, no tea. But... We already understand. Okay? Get some people that actually know how to write. Okay? Get Quinta Bronson on the line. All right? Get somebody. I want somebody black. You know, they can come through, make this a whole screenplay. Because not only is Risa Tisa putting out her story, I've seen at least two exes. I've seen the ex-wife and the ex that was from 2000, I think, 14 or 15. And she said everything that Risa Tisa was saying, she went through the same thing practically besides the fact that she did not marry that man but she had to put a restraining order on him because he would not get out her um stop coming over to her apartment i said oh my goodness and then the stepson the stepson said to um one of the ex-wives the stepson said yeah he did the same thing to him made him think that he was about to buy him a car because that's what he would do to go to the dealerships um you know test driving these cars and all this stuff and never got it. <laughs> i said what the whole time, dude had screenshots of cars and stuff, like, and houses and, and, and bank statements and everything just from off of Google. I said, girl, if Catfish ain't never tell us nothing, Catfish said, go on Google image search and reverse image search that goddamn picture and see if it was on somewhere else on the internet. Okay? That's what you need to do these days, all right? Sometimes we do got to go all out and pay for a freaking background check because sometimes, like, if you feel that way... And you feel like you got to do all that too. I feel like that's the sign that you just need to go ahead and back the fuck away from that situation. That's how I feel. But that was that. Um, y'all tell me how y'all felt about that whole situation. For real, for real. Or have you ever been in a situation like that? Girl, don't lie. If I could be honest, don't lie. Um, Moving on. DC Young Fly, he had his bag stolen from an event. Um, and he put up a video... And he was basically, I don't know how long this event was or when this happened or if it was recently. I just know he put up a video that basically said, can y'all please return my bag? Because he had a lot of important things in there. And one of the important things to him was the death certificate of his, the mother of his child, children, um, his girlfriend. I don't know if it was his fiance, but I'm pretty sure she was his girlfriend. But, and... People, I was looking at this on the shade room. Com I think it was the shade room or the neighborhood talk. Because that's where I, them, them the blogs on Instagram that I usually follow. Shade room, neighborhood talk, ball alert. And I know somebody can be like, but Ashley, you talk so much. I do. I do. Listen, I could be a walking contradiction sometimes. And I'm not going to even sit here and lie to you. Okay? I can talk so much crap about how bad they are and I still look at it. Baby, I'm part of the problem. That is. That is. Because I be all up in the shade room and the neighborhood talk comments just going off sometimes. Sometimes it's a good key. But then sometimes it's just like, y'all put, they put up stuff deliberately so that people can say certain things. And I just wish that certain things were off limit. Okay? Because you know how people are going to go. And especially when it comes to like LGBT stuff, you know that especially on the neighborhood talk i know they're trying to be um very much like they just putting out the news and i just would like my moral compass will feel some type of way especially because you know the owner of the neighborhood talk he is a gay man and then you putting out stuff that you know that the people is gonna be 
I know you're just trying to not pick and choose whatever you're trying to be fair. Because if it's news, it's news. I get that. But ugh, them comments sometimes, especially when it comes to gay issues. Oh, my God. They just the homophobia don't even be hidden. It be right there in your face. You know what I'm saying? Just be disgusting. But anyway, you got that right. And then people were saying, I don't understand how come he had the death certificate up in his bag. Why are you walking around with a death certificate and all that? You know, and it's been a minute. Trust and believe I get it. And my whole thing is, it could be a coping mechanism. Everybody deals with grief and death in their own way. And this can be his way that he, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I can't explain it, but it could be a coping mechanism for him right now. Okay? It, it can be like that's part of him because that's still her on paper legalized or whatever and if he puts it away it's not by him physically it's going to be permanent that she's no longer here or whatever it's really going to sink in or we don't know if he had to use those papers uh the death certificate to go take care of some business and that's why it was up in the bag or whatever but at the same time, I'm pretty sure you can go get another copy of the death certificate. I know when um when my father passed, we got multiple copies. We got multiple copies because, bitch, you got to close out this to close out this account, this account, that account. I need to see this death certificate. I need to see the original. This de A girl, child, it's a mess because I'm still going through it right now. It is at the end of February. I'm still going through some stuff. Had to send out some papers for a death, uh, death certificate last week, actually. So, yeah. It is a lot. So I'm not going to sit here and judge him for walking around with that uh, death certificate in his bag like other people were. Because, again, you just don't know. The grieving process is a long process. It's not short. It's not simple. It's not sweet. And people grieve in their own ways. He can have it for that reason. Or he could have had the death certificate in his bag because he was doing some business or he needed the for, for proof of whatever he probably was doing. You just don't know. But I just feel like it's really messed up that people are still taking people's stuff like that. Like, why are you stealing people's stuff for what? And it wasn't even no money. Like he said, ain't no money up in the bag. Ain't nothing else up in the bag. Like, ain't nothing of value in the bag. Unless it was like a name brand designer bag or something, you're not going to get nothing out of it. <laughs> like, it was pointless. That's like when people rob somebody that you think got some money and you only come up with $20. You did all of that for twenty dollars, like come on. But um I, I I still pray for him a little bit that you know he get through this or whatever. Um British Williams. Yeah, I remember British. Girl, every time it is so sad, every time we talk about this girl then it's about her going to jail. I want people to get their life together. I really hope that this is a lesson for her because one thing about it. You cannot play the government as a regular person. I had to clear that up because we already got somebody that's playing the government and been playing. And they out here free, willy-nilly as it is. Okay. You know, y'all heard that verdict. Y'all heard that verdict. Now, he had to pay them people. I don't know what it is. Some company or whatever. He had to pay them a $360 million fine. Or is it $360 million or $363 million? Either way, it's a lot. Okay. I said, God damn. I said, oh, my God. And then the lady said, now, if he don't want to pay, baby, I'll take his buildings. I said, oh. Oh, that baby tingled a little bit. I said, take his shit. <laughs> take it mm. that was funny to me i said baby it really don't pay to do crime and to be slick at the mouth like that it, it just really don't pay um and we really you know they think that it's sweet and he getting away with stuff my hair really is brown like for real for real if y'all can't um it's really it's something don't try to emulate other people that you think getting away with stuff because you are not them and they got a more powerful team than you do. You are just a regular person down there attending to nobody to them and they will take your ass in first before they do them. We see all that. We are not equal in this shit. If you don't understand that now, I'm pretty sure Miss British would because the whole argument, she pissed me off that whole time when she was up there talking about something. 
I was up in there because when well, I had seen the interview or whatever with Carlos King, and she was like, you know, I did this and I did that, but then you giving me four years or whatever, but you got people who did way more than me and who actually did this or whatever, and they only get two, a, a couple of months or so or six months or a year, or whatever, and it's like, that's not fair. That's not fair. I said, girl, you got over 15 counts against you. You have over 15 felony counts against you. Most of that shit is wire fry, fry, all that stuff. Baby, the government don't play nothing about that. Because not only do you have to pay the money, you got to pay that time and you got to pay that money back. And then you keep on furthering yourself, messing yourself up by going back and forth with the courts about the date when you're supposed to turn yourself in. So they give you a little reprieve and they push it back to after Christmas, right? You're supposed to turn yourself in in January. You missed that date on purpose because you're trying to get them to push it back again. And they said, no, girl, we're not about to do that. They finally got her ass and they reprimanded her into prison. Um, Well, into custody of the U.S. Marshal so that she could start her prison sentence. Baby, my whole thing is... If I did something and I know I did it, I'm I'm a I'm going to fight to get a reasonable sentence. And then once I get that reasonable sentence because I feel like this is very reasonable at the at, I'm pretty sure it's federal, right? So that's 4 years, which means she probably got to do like 85% of that. Whereas if it wasn't federal, she probably would have did like half of it and would have got out 85% of that. That means look, probably three years or a little under three years or whatever or maybe three and a half i don't know either way either way you probably wouldn't have did the full the full full four close to it but not the four the full but if i did something like that and it's just like the jesse smollett case like jesse jesse you could have went on ahead all this appeals and stuff and i know you you want to pretend your innocence and all this stuff and i guess you feel like if you go ahead and do it that means that you're guilty and all that and you lied and it proved what people were saying about you being a liar and all that stuff. Baby, at the end of the day, you're not going to change people's minds who already think that it is what it is. What you did was wrong because what, what you did was totally wrong, okay? You only had 180 days. 180 days. By the time you would have went up in there to serve that 100, was it 180 or 150? Either way, you only had half 180, 150 days. You probably would have did only about a good 35 and if anything, a cop probably would have let you out earlier than that if it was overcrowded. Now you just playing games at this point. You putting off the inevitable what's inevitably going to happen, you know. And that's the same thing that I feel like British was trying to do. And it backfired on it. It didn't work in her advance. In her uh, advantage because at this, at this point, I feel like they're going to make her do the whole four sentences. Four year sentence, you know what I'm saying? Because you playing games, you know? And then probably gonna up that restitution price that she gotta pay. Girl, did y'all hear that her uh boyfriend, her baby daddy, they was out there doing scam too. He was scamming too. I said, so both of y'all was out there doing this mess? Yes. I said, Oh, poor baby. And I'm talking about the daughter. Okay, y'all don't be thinking about y'all kids when y'all be doing this stuff. You say that you do it to get the um, you know, to provide for your family, whatever. All right, do it for a couple of minutes and then get the fuck out, okay? And try to legitimize yourself so that people won't be looking into you and be like, oh, you did this, so let me take you away from your kids and all that stuff. Girl, what? Y'all don't be really thinking, okay? And I be hating that. Um, Moving on from that, uh, Floyd Mayweather... You can really, these days, like, abusers really be, um, they be exposing themselves. They really do. Because he was giving an interview and somebody, and within the interview, they brought up the Diddy situation, right? Him being charged with all these, or having these allegations of, you know, um, sexual assault and all this stuff against him and everything, right? He said, <clears throat> mistakes happen. And I can't say it is or if it's not a mistake, but things happen in life. And P. Diddy business is P. Diddy business. It's not my job or anyone else's job to go on the Internet and stump him and kick him, kick a man when he's down. My take on things is it's not my business. 
I don't think is right at all, and I don't condone it. And what he mean about that is he don't condone and think it's right for people to judge a person on the internet like him and to be up in his business. And he said, even if that happened to my daughter, I would be hurt. But that's the choice my daughter made. So I don't want to kick anybody while they're down. Mind you, one of his daughters is, um, I don't know how many daughters he got, but the one that we do know about, for sure, for sure, got a baby by an NBA no, uh, young boy. And we already know how that is. My, I just, uh, like, really? We literally have to get out of that mind frame of, well, it ain't my business or whatever when it comes to certain things. Because in my mind when i say when i hear people that don't stand up for stuff like that don't speak out against stuff like that especially when it comes to sexual offenders predators pedophiles all of that stuff and you turn a blind eye to it and then you use that whole thing as an excuse of oh you trying to kick a black person while they down oh you just trying to oh this is what black people do they always turn on each other we turn on each other before anybody else ain't no other communities that's doing this bitch please okay one thing about it, two things for sure, I'm going to stand for my black folks all day, every day. But also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold their asses accountable. I don't give a damn if you look like me, you the same color as me, you are darker hue than me, you uh, successful is, uh, more successful than me, you got more power than me, you don't have nothing. If you do something wrong that is that bad... Baby, I'm going to hold you to the fire. I am not finna support that. I am not finna hold my tongue and be like, well, it ain't my business because I didn't see what happened. That's their business. I'm not finna kick them down and all this stuff when the evidence is all right there. And multiple people coming out saying the same thing in different instances at different time periods. And we know how that time period was. Baby, please get the fuck out of here. That is condoning stuff. That is being okay with shit like that happening. And so it's, it's, you, you tell victims, you tell victims, oh, well, you shouldn't be quiet. And um, that's what you get because you be quiet. Why are you so quiet this time and all this stuff? Why it take you so long to say something? Because as soon as they do, all of a sudden they get jumped on because people want to protect the abuser. People want to tech, protect the accused. People don't want to hold them accountable because it's, oh, you trying to be, bring a black person down. Especially when it comes to celebrity black men. We seen it with R. Kelly. Y'all literally saw that man having sex with a fucking child. You spread it child porn around as if it was a Disney movie. Okay? That's how y'all was doing. And y'all was still okay with it. And you still doubting the fact that some of this stuff could have happened. Like, what? What? Oh, well, they was up. Uh, it don't matter. It don't fucking matter. Okay? He was committing crimes. All right? Bill Cosby. Same thing. That motherfucker got in a disposition and on a, um, a deposition and on a freaking Larry King interview talking about the Spanish fly. Okay? What he used to drug people with. Women with. Like, What? This, the people, they, they will say the stuff out their own mouth. Their stuff happen. And just because it happened so many years ago, it's, oh, you're just trying to kick a black man down. You're just trying to kick a black man down. Or, why y'all go so hard on this black man or whatever, but when a white person do it, you don't do this and you don't do that. Baby, Harvey Weinstein going to die in jail. Okay? He going to die and he can rot. And they do. Danny Matheson, he can ride in jail too. Okay? Like, baby, it ain't no picking and no choosing. Y'all the one doing the fucking picking and choosing when you say, oh, I'm not finna go hard on this one because he black. Or you trying to kick a black person down or whatever. No. No. We holding all fucking predators to the goddamn flame, flames. Okay? We putting their flames to the fires. They feet to the fires or whatever. That's what we doing. That's what you have to do. Okay, because if we want to get rid of stuff like that, you need to have them be held accountable. Instead of fucking just, it ain't my business. Because that tells me that you engaged in some shit. And that you will probably see some shit that happens and let it go. And we all, and some of us be like, what if you have daughters? What if something like that happened to your daughter, to your sister, to your mama? Floyd Mayweather just said what well, he'll do. I mean, it'll hurt, but that's the choice she made. Wow. So she made the choice to be degraded and abused 
Wow. Okay. Okay. I don't understand it. I don't understand. And there's still going to be people in the comments that's going to be like, well, he right, he right, he right. And you're stupid. I can't say it no other way. I don't fuck with that at all. I really can't. Ugh. I just don't respect people that just, I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, Moving on from that. Chris Brown, he was supposed to be up in the All-Star Game, right? All-Star Game was this past weekend in Indianapolis. I'm going to leave y'all country. Uh, I was about to say I'm going to leave y'all country alone. I'm going to leave y'all city alone, okay? I'm going to leave the state alone. Y'all get a reprieve, okay? But he was supposed to be in All-Star Game, the celebrity game that, was supposed to, uh, that went down during All-Star Weekend. He got the invite. But then... He comes out and said basically the NBA because they basically reneged on the invite and disinvited him and said that it wasn't their decision, but they have to look out for their sponsors as their sponsors decision like ruffles. OK, now, when I first saw this before, you know, he put up anything and before um, the aftermath of what happened, I was going to say that, OK, well, Technically speaking, you can't really be mad at the NBA. On the one hand, it's not really the NBA's fault. It's the sponsor's fault because it's similar like how we are on YouTube. You can't say certain stuff unless you're going to get less ads on your videos or whatever um, due to the sponsors, right? And that's similar what happened with um, Chris Brown and this All-Star game. But then here come Ruffle talking about some, you know, I don't know what they're talking about. Baby, we ain't say nothing like that. And that's because the people was all up in Chris Brown's comments and whatever. I mean, not Chris Brown, but going in on Ruffles and they comments and all that stuff. I said, I know y'all not beefing with a uh, freaking chip company. Like, what? Now, let me tell you something. Ruffles, y'all used to be the shit back in the day. I ain't even going to hold you. That was my favorite trip chip back in the day. You know, these days, I, I got to really have a craving, like a real bad, bad craving for some chips for me to go out and actually buy some. Like, if I want some nachos, I, I, I'll go buy some Doritos, some spicy nacho Doritos, and put a little bit of cheese on it. And that's it. And that's literally like a once in a while type of thing. My whole thing is, Ruffles, when I want to go get some chips, I don't even go to you no more. Okay? You want to know why? Because first of all, I get chips a little bit too hard these days. From the last time I had some, they're a little bit too goddamn hard. And I ain't even trying to go in on y'all like that, but I'm just trying to say. 2000-something ain't the same as what it was back in the day when we was kids and when we was teenagers. Everything has fucking changed, okay? Ruffles, y'all chips used to be the greatest, all right? That cheddar, cheddar cheese, sour cream and cheddar cheese, baby. Baby, every time we went to the store, that's what we used to get all the time. Now, if I was to get a bag, it'd be salty as hell. Okay, it, why is it so salty? And why the chip so damn hard? It's cutting into my gums. Okay, like what's going on? No, I have to take a step back. I have to say, no, girlfriend, put that to the side. Put that to the side. We're not going to get those. Okay, it's just a lie. It's just a lie. And I don't, I don't understand what, the, what happened to the formula. Did somebody accidentally tip over the freaking salt bag and put a little bit more than they need to in just about every batch these days? Like, right, what is happening? Okay. People are out here trying to get their health in order and they want to have a little cheat meal or whatever. And so with their cheat meal, they get a bag of chips and then they decide to get your chips. And then it's so much salt up in there. They blood pressure going up like, what? Come on. What are you trying to do? But anyway, back to this. They said, girlfriend, y'all ain't got to be up in our comments coming at us because we ain't had nothing to do with that. And I'm sitting here like, well, damn, who did? Now, Ruffles, like, you trying to um save your ass? Uncover your tracks, or is it really the NBA that was trying to have behind Ruffles and use them as an excuse? And they was the real ones that wanted to and didn't want him now because he has been in some of those games before. So, what was the difference now? Don't say that it's a policy thing because y'all protect a lot of people, okay? Y'all protect a lot of people up in sports and allow them to do a lot of things, all right? And then for Chris Brown, like, let's let's just get into it. We know Chris Brown has a history. He has a history that's ongoing. I don't care what nobody says, and you can be a fan of or whatever. You can defend to the to the deaths or whatever. Baby, at the end of the day, he is an abuser. That's just what it is, okay? Whether he's actively doing it or he's done it in a long hasn't done it in a long time, that's just what it is. That's a stigma that's gonna be with him forever. Y'all can keep on saying, so when we gonna let him go past and when we gonna let this happen and when we gonna let go, that's like saying, um, 
if somebody was a pedophile, you're going to stop calling them a pedophile because they only did that one time. And you're going to let it go past or whatever. You're going to let your kids around them. Once that stigma is on you, that stigma is on you. Once a drug addict, you're always a drug addict, regardless of how many years you've been clean. Once an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic, no matter how many time, years it's been since you had a drink. You know, that stigma will always be on you. And that's something that you're going to have to deal with. Because some people are just not so easily swayed and for like okay to forgive just because a victim has forgiven and moved on. That don't mean that everybody else has. Because you have to understand that there are people that was once your fans of this person who also went through the same thing that a victim has went through. Whatever that tumultuous relationship, I'm not blaming. I'm not saying she did this, he did this. What we saw was the aftermath of what he did, okay? And what he continued to do. You know, if people at a time was trying to give him, like, grace or whatever because he was young, he still had a history of doing stuff. Let's not act like Karuchi didn't have a restraining order on him. Let's not act like she did not say she got physically hurt in that relationship as well. We saw him stalking the girl. I know y'all remember when he popped up on her at the club and he was all up in her face outside. Outside on that curb like this. Like what? You know, like he even said things in his own mouth of how he be. You know, and people want to put that to the side and people want everybody to expect everybody to just be like, you know, because I like him because it was this long time ago, because this is what I will put up with. I mean, he made good music. I think he cute or whatever. He can dance and all this stuff. I'm going to put him to the side and I'm going to still listen to him. I'm, I, he he needs to be respected and all that stuff. It don't work like that. It don't work like that for anybody. Now, am I going to sit here and say that I haven't listened to a Chris Brown record after the whole situation happened? I'm not going to sit here and lie to you like that. But at the same time, I'm not going to argue with people that's going to say, oh, he shouldn't be this and he shouldn't be that. Because they got legitimate fucking reason and he giving it to him. He fucked his own career up, okay? And his career technically ain't even fucked up no more like that. You still out here doing this and doing that. Like, go to where people are accepting of you. Okay? Go to where people are accepting of you. I'm not going to get upset because of the fact that they want to kick me out. I, you know what you did. But at the same time, yeah, get, feel a little bit away. I give him leeway on this because, again, it's the fucking NBA. And y'all got a whole bunch of shit up in there. I said all that to say that I, I kind of understand where you're coming from. Because you got a whole bunch of shit up in there. Like, if that's the case, y'all had other artists that was there, other celebrities that was there that probably had records and did some shit that wasn't in appliance to your policies or whatever, that could have had issues with sponsorships and all of that stuff, but yet you still had them there. I mean, if my whole thing is don't pick and choose. If you're going to do it for one, do it for everybody. That's how I feel about it, you know? But... Y'all tell me how y'all feel. And I know, again, it's going to be people that's in the comments. Because I know somebody that really, really loved Chris Brown so much. I just let her have it. It is what it is. Like, hey, can I say this? And this ain't no no hating stuff. Because I used to love Chris Brown when he first came out. For real, for real. But these days, when I be looking at him, people be looking at him. And they be posting videos or whatever. And him doing this and all this stuff, whatever. I be like, and they be like, oh my God, he's so fine. He's so fine. Chris Brown, to me, just in my honest opinion, no shade. He does not look the same. Fine. He is not on the same level of fineness that he was when he first came out and when he first started coming in his full adulthood. It's like after those tattoos came on, I don't know. Something just went down. He just be looking. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, Not saying that he ugly. Not, not be... It's just like when the men came out in the 90s, like Tay Diggs, let's give him an example. Tay Diggs still cute, but he ain't 90s fine like he was in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? But he's still cute in 2000 something. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. It's like that. But it, he just decreased a little bit, you know? Don't jump me. I'm just saying. I can say that about a few people. Y'all can say that about me. It is what it is. You know hey. Um... Monica said she ain't got no BBL, okay? Girl, y'all was having a time with my girl. (sighs) 
Y'all was having a goddamn time. Today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. I gotta go work tomorrow. Y'all was having time with my girl for the past couple of days or so. Y'all was putting clips out there and she wasn't hitting the notes right. And then all of a sudden it's wanna bring up the Brandy and Monica thing. Like they friends now, okay? Can we stop? I really want y'all to stop comparing stuff. I really do. Because people can't just have an off day or a few off days. Like, I'm just being honest. Okay, like, cool. Oh, yeah. Everybody ain't got to like everybody. Everybody ain't got to put everybody down like that. I was just, I just sat back and I, because I, a couple of clips that they had put up, I couldn't really defend. I couldn't, I just said, well, in my head, I'm like, I mean, it was just, maybe she got a cold or something. I don't know. It's usually not like this. And when I see Monica live, she was good. Okay. You know, that's my girl. Stand 10 times, 10, what is it? 10 toes down with her. You know, it is what it is. But y'all, that ain't what we talking about. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Mm -hmm. um, which makes me wonder how she's going to be received at the um, Pink Friday tool, tour. And I get it that people were saying that, you know, because there was people that were saying that, you know, it doesn't really make sense for her to be at the Pink Friday tour or Nikki's tour. Because what type of combination is that? And trying to say that, you know, um, Nikki fans are young and all that stuff. But, I mean, yeah, they're young. But I'm pretty sure they know a couple of Monica songs. That too. But also, like Kevin from Scorpion's, Scorpion Show said, she would be more suited. It would make more sense, though, if she was to be on, like, Usher tour. And I was like, yeah, it come to think of it, because I really wasn't even thinking of that. Like, if she would have got on Usher tour, nobody would have made no fuss about it and been like, girl, what? Because it makes sense. And they got songs together, too, you know. Um, but Monica and Nicki do got a history with each other, so I can understand that. But, you know, I guess people are more so concerned about how Monica is going to be perceived by her uh, Nicki's younger fans. You know what I'm saying? Not the ones that are our age and who grew up with Monica, who at least know a couple of her songs. But we're talking about listening to Monica do a whole set before Nicki come out. Like, are they going to sit there? Are they going to engage? How it's going to be? Do they get it or whatever? Do they even care? You know, that's just what it is. But I don't think it's nothing negative. I think she's going to do good for the most part. You know, everybody have an off day. But Monica says she don't have a BBL, okay? Because it was a video. Monica was looking thicker than I ever seen her look thick before. And I said, now, hold on, ma'am. Even I had to question in my head. I knew not to put that out there because I'm like, wait a minute. You know, sometimes women, our weight fluctuates. Trust and believe I know, right? And so I was like, wait a minute. She did have a little booty poking out back there. Girl, she said them booty pads. That was just the pants. Pads. She said, listen, I'm too sick. She said her health is too bad to get BBL. A BBL. And she's telling the truth. Like, Monica has issues with high blood pressure. She has issues with endometriosis and some other things. And I was like, damn, girl. But, yeah, everybody ain't got BBLs. People just be either stuffing their shit or, you know, just be gaining weight. That's just all that it is, y'all. Calm down. Um, Kelly Rowland. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Let's just talk about it for a second. I feel so bad for her. And at this point, and y'all, and I'm I'm gonna be real, real with y'all. Because y'all know, uh, and it's so it's so messed up that we can't even talk about her without bringing up Beyonce. Because at this point, it's involving Beyonce indirectly. And I just want to know how, like, truthfully, 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 how be not Beyonce, but Kelly and Michelle feels. Whatever it is that they are going out to promote a project or they're giving an interview on something that they got going on or a cause that they involved in or whatever, that Beyonce name is always brought up. And it's not necessarily in reference to, oh, the DC days or whatever, like when, when y'all getting back together, but it's literally about Beyonce and what she has going on. And... <clears throat> No matter how close a person is with another person, how much you consider a person family, you cannot tell me that that does not get bothersome. Does not invoke jealousy necessarily. And I'm not going to say jealousy. I do not feel like 
Kelly nor Michelle are jealous of Beyonce. They are her number one supporters for sure. You know, when it comes time to ride for her, they will ride. Okay. When it comes time to stand up for, they will stand up for. But I can understand the frustration it has to be when you are in an interview trying to promote something that is going on with you. And then you are getting questions about Beyonce. Just because you grew up with her, just because y'all family or whatever, your friends, baby, yeah, we all got stuff going on right about now, but you are talking to me. And I feel like these interviewers these days are doing that because they can't get to Beyonce. So let's get to the second best thing. And that's Kelly at this point. Kelly has a movie coming out on Netflix, Mia Coppola, Mia Coppola. Mia Copa. Yeah. It's coming out on Friday. That's the 23rd, right? It's coming out on the 23rd. Her and Trevante Rose. It's a Tyler Perry movie or whatever. We seen the pictures and all that stuff with them doing in, um, doing the premieres and all that or whatever. It was beautiful, right? The girls came out and supported each other. Okay? And their various projects that have been happening. The girls have been coming out supporting each other. You know? But... If Kelly is going on an interview talking about the movie that she's in, why, Big Tigger and company, are you bringing up Beyonce's country album, Beyonce's Texas Hold'em? You know, why are you bringing that up? And why are you bringing up what is she going to do for act two when all this stuff, whatever? And she keeps, Kelly keeps telling you, I don't know, but, you know, I'm here to talk about my movie. I'm here to talk about my movie. I'm not here to talk about her. I'm here to talk about my movie. And I don't want people to misinterpret that as, oh, she's being jealous or whatever because Beyonce, because I've seen somebody say this, say, you know, it's some jealousy because she wants to be the star. No, it's not jealousy. It's the fact that I'm not here to talk about Beyonce. And you have to remember, they have to go through this so, so many years because Beyonce is as big as she is and the most the broke. She's the breakout star of Destiny Chest. We get that. She's the biggest star out there for right now, especially of a black artist, period. You know, and <clears throat> for you to go on the show to promote your movie, but then to be asking questions over and over again about what your sis is doing. And my coworker, it, I felt bad for Trevante because he was just sitting there looking like he ain't know what to do. Like, I'm here too. We're not trying to talk about Beyonce at this point. And I don't understand why are y'all bringing up Beyonce and her music and what she's doing to people like Kelly and Michelle, knowing damn well they not going to give you nothing. After all these years that y'all done seen people interview them and talk about Beyonce and her new project, her new music, what she got going on, have they ever leaked anything or said anything in those interviews to y'all about it? Absolutely not. So why would you think that they're going to do it now? Stop asking them about Beyonce. It's not about Beyonce. It's about Kelly and her movie and her co-worker. That's what it's about. Then you get this whole situation that blew up about her um, leaving the Today Show the fourth hour she was supposed to help co-host with Hoda Kopti and she left after an interview with Savannah Guthrie right and they had to scramble and get Rita Ora they didn't have to scramble because Rita Ora was already there she was already meant to come on the show so that was a lie in itself right there but they tried to make it seem as if you know she had an issue with the dressing room being too small and all that stuff but yeah I'm supposed to be um hosting with you for this whole hour and all this but in my dressing room, small as hell. But yeah, you got Jennifer Lopez, who only come in here for a couple of minutes to do a little interview and then leaving. She got a big ass dressing room. That don't make sense. Now, on the one hand, I hated the fact that this, this got out like this because people was trying to, I seen some people who was trying to make it as if, oh, she trying to be a diva. You ain't no diva. You know, trying to be a diva, or whatever, trying to think she's bigger than what she is, and she needs to be respectful. She needs to take what she can get. Bethany Frankel, I'm going to need you to shut your ass up. Because you need to stay your ass over there in Bravo business. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you, but you you interject in too much shit. Baby, I get it that we get on this internet and we talk about stuff or whatever, but baby, we talk about stuff that we are part of. Like, we the same. You know what I'm saying? You don't know nothing about shit over here. 
You can't stay your ass over there, okay, girlfriend? Because every time I hear you talk about stuff and the way that you were talking about Kelly, it just came off very much. It had a little racist undertone to it to me, to me. And it was one of those situations where um you you ain't too big for this you need to just take it and all this stuff like girl like why we gotta just take stuff just because that's what you would do y'all ain't on the same fucking level bitch okay and kelly has been on and hosted with the today show a couple of times and it has never been a problem so obviously it was something deeper i just did not really i did not play into that whole thing about it be in a dressing room or whatever. Because that just didn't make sense. And it just didn't seem like Kelly to do nothing like that. But then again, you just don't know what people would do. But in her history, it just doesn't seem like something like that that she would do. Girl that came out today, dad, from the inside or whatever, allegedly, that what it was really about was the fact that when she had that interview with Savannah Guthrie, Savannah kept on asking about Beyonce again. About her putting out Texas Hold'em. About her putting out 16 Carriages. About her doing Act 2. About her this. And if you look at the interview, Kelly is not trying to really engage, engage like that. But trying to get that focus off of that to why she's there. About her. You know? And I was just like, I can see if they're doing the whole hour and that's part of the program to talk about it because at that time we did find out that you know now that uh texas holdem congratulations okay texas holdem is like number two on the billboard charts or whatever country music and all that stuff first black woman to be on a country music chart that's cute that's great baby i got my um uh, cowboy hat <laughs> listen did i buy a hat yes i did am i gonna wear it anywhere no is that kind of mental illness possibly okay so it is what it is it is what it is you know but i feel like it's safe it's safe i look cute into it too i will put it on but i don't feel like um getting up and getting it right now i just want to continue this but at the same time you can see the frustration that was building and it's like read the room and i understand that you are a journalist and you are trying to get the questions out but you have to read the room and if you can tell that the person that you are interviewing is getting a little uncomfortable or getting testy or whatever you need to learn how to divert and you need to learn how to, you know, switch paces real quick. Okay. Because yeah, I would be pissed off too. If I'm here to talk about my stuff and you keep on bringing up, not my stuff, but Beyonce stuff. Okay. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be mad at her. And I'm pretty sure Beyonce ain't mad at her either. I don't know how Beyonce feel for real though. Knowing that you this big, that your sisters can't even, girl, I was about to say something, but sometimes I'm going to say it. Sometimes Beyonce, you don't make it no better. Let me shut up because that's probably why I didn't get invited uh, to the um <laughs> to the sacred hair care lines. Did y'all see that? Kelly did no wrong in my eyes and she would never do no wrong. Okay, that is a sweet human being. You can't tell me no different. All right, all these years, she ain't never had no real controversy on her like that. And y'all are not about to start. Stop asking her about Beyonce. Stop asking Michelle about Beyonce because they are going to give you the same fucking answer. Nothing. Well, if you want some answers about Beyonce, you go ask Mama Tina. Because now that Mama Tina going to slip up and tell you everything, okay? That's who you get it all from. And she going to get cussed out by Beyonce later on. And we already know that happens, all right? So there, that's who you go to. And, and you probably could have got some information out of her this week, too, because, you know, Beyonce launched her, uh, what is it, Sacred Hair Care Line or whatever. You know, I had forgot to mention it the last week when it came out or when it first was announced. Um... Now, when I saw the prices that um that had leaked or whatever, I said, oh, okay, it's kind of affordable. And what I mean by affordable for a celebrity thing and for somebody of her caliber, yeah, it's a little bit affordable knowing damn well that some of the stuff that she's been putting out has been a little bit high. I was like, oh, okay. But, you know, um, she put a little hair care line out. They had a little uh launch party last night. And it was an all-white party. Shout out to my girl, Symphony. Uh, Symphony Soto. She was out there. I said, damn. Girl, you be, you be. Now, do I need to move to L.A.? Like, what's happening? Like, I just don't get no invite. I don't get no invite. I said, well, where's my invite? I could have had on 
you know, all white, put on some white jeans and a white uh blazer, you know what I'm saying, put on the white buttons down and everything, and, you know, I could have had my hair done, bedding in or whatever, I could have been doing it too, you know, um, but I, I, I guess, I guess my invitation just was never put in the mail, so hey, that is what it is, shout out to Crystal, not Crystal, but Crystal and Kid Fury, if y'all watch or listen to the Read podcast, and if you know me, you know I love them. I'm one of my favorite podcasts to ever listen to. And they are Beyonce stands. And Crystal was the one that they showed the video of, for those that don't know, uh, when Self Title dropped and she was online talking to Chelsea Lee and this other girl. And she was like, oh my God, the video just, the album just dropped. Wait a minute. And she was just so shocked or whatever. That is a classic video, you know. Um, so they deserve that, you know what I'm saying? They deserve that whole invitation. I'm so happy for all three of them, for real, for real. But it was a lot of other people there. Um, and it was a beautiful event. Baby, I'm going to need Blue Ivy to slow the fuck down. Every time we see her, mama has grown a good two inches. And I know it ain't just the shoes, bitch. Okay, you are growing up a little bit too fast. And I'm talking about the height wise. I'm just like, damn, I remember when you was in your mama's belly. You know, it's crazy. These kids are just getting wild and just growing up so fast. But, um, yeah, it, it's cute or whatever. Am I, like, hyped about it? Absolutely not. And you want to know why? Because that ain't what I want. <laughs> I mean, I get to, I'll probably check out something, but it ain't nothing that I must have or whatever. You know, um, I eventually probably check it out and get something probably, but not at the moment. I'm not, I wait till the hype died down a little bit. Cause what I wanted ain't what happening right now, baby. We want the Renaissance film on streaming. That's bitch. That's all of them. And, and then I wonder why I don't get right nowhere and, and people don't say nothing because I look how I'm talking. Like, but girl, sometimes you just got to be real. You just got to be real. You can put it out. You can be like, put it out on this day. It's Black History Month. It's the 20th. 21st. We got eight more days. Are you going to surprise us with that? Like, I gave up on the visuals. I really feel like when it comes to the visuals, it's a possibility that she's going to give us all the visuals from all Act 3 at the end of Act 3 or when Act 3 leaks or come out or whatever. I could see. You know what? Act 2 is cute with this country stuff. Ain't really my cup of tea, but I'm going to be into it or whatever. And I've been getting into a whole bunch of other country artists or whatever, black country artists, and they are good, okay? I said that last time. But Act 3, if the people is right and they say that it's going to be rock and roll or whatever, it's going to be a little bit of rock or whatever, I could dig that. I could dig that. Because I mean, like, if you like a little Tina Turner, if you like when, um, like, rock funk or whatever, when I feel like rock funk would be something like when Whitney Houston did Queen of the Night. Queen of the Night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got stuff that you want. Got stuff that you need. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Give me a little. What was that, y'all? Y'all know what that is? Okay, you cool with me. Like, pay homage to the peoples. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Come on. I, I'm really looking forward to Act 3. Act 2 was cute. Yeah, but Act 3, I'm going to be really into it. I'm going to be really into it. Baby, see, I can't. I can't. And then I'll be like, well, because, bitch, you shake. Oh, it is what it is. I'm just not the one that's going to lie to you. Okay? I'm just not going to lie to you. Anyway, moving on from that, Kelly Osborne, I'm going to need you to be quiet. <clears throat> I'm going to need you to be quiet. Because my thing is, just because you are asked a question, that does not mean that you have to answer it. Look at what Kelly Rowland did. Okay, take the advice and take the lead. Follow the lead of Kelly Rowland. She was asked a question that she did not want to answer, and she didn't answer it. She just diverted back to what she was trying to be there for. Now, you get asked about, asked about this Ozempic shit. Now, let me just tell you this. 
your mama was on Ozempic and she was on there a little bit too much. Mama started looking a little bit skeletal and I'm pretty sure, and I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to make fun of. That's literally what she was looking like. If you go look at the picture and she even said it herself that she probably overdid it, you know, cause she's getting way too small. Okay. She gets on there doing this little interview with somebody on a red carpet. I don't know where it was, who it was, whatever. But basically she said she's all the way here for the Ozempic um, trend. And that is like, who who would want to do something so uh, boring like you losing weight by um, working out or whatever? We'll try anything else to do something to lose weight instead of just being uh, bored with working out and all that stuff. I said, what? If you're doing the right workout, working out is not boring. It's kind of actually fun, depending on what it is, you know? Because trust and believe, I be up in here and I do different stuff so that I won't get into a like... A plateau or something or you know whatever and I just I switch it up it's not necessarily boring you don't want to work for it. you lazy that's what the fuck it is you know what I'm saying that's how I feel and I'm saying that because you know they say stuff about big people y'all don't want to do nothing because y'all lazy as hell well bitch y'all taking fucking ozempic because you lazy as hell you don't want to eat right you don't want to fucking put in the work and do a little exercise here and there and sweat a bit Okay. Meanwhile, you're talking about some the people that are mad about people doing Ozempic are the ones that secretly want to do it themselves, but they can't afford it and they mad because they can't afford to do it themselves. Bitch, I would have slapped her on that carpet. Okay, because why would you say something like that? She has been known to say some ignorant shit. And this is just adding to the list, okay? When she said that stuff about Trump wanting to build a wall and get the um Hispanics out the country and she said that on the view and she said well who's going to be there to clean your toilets I said wait a minute girl they cut her off from me she was like no I mean you understand what I'm saying no girl okay you meant exactly what you meant right then and there you know I said mm. but my whole thing is this you will never get me okay as somebody that is a big person but who is fully capable and have no problem with getting my big ass up, taking a walk, uh, putting in some sweat, getting on a fucking exercise bike, getting on a little step or whatever that I got, put, putting in some weight work or whatever, you know, lifting weights and all that stuff, and eating correctly. You will never get me to say that I need to get on Ozempic and take it away from people who actually need it for their diabetes. And not just diabetes that they get because of the fact that they're overweight, but type 1 diabetes that ain't got nothing to do with weight. You know, people that are really out here who need this medicine because of their insulin deficiency. And you are out here taking it just because you too lazy to fucking work out. And I'm talking about not this because not everybody is doing this for that reason. But I'm talking about for Kelly Osborne to say some stupid shit like that. Like, girl, just shut up. Just shut up. OK, that really pissed me off. Um, Moving on from that. Okay, I did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Tom Sandoval, I don't know if y'all look at the um, Vanderpump Rules. I looked at the first episode this season and I haven't looked at anything else from it. I, I mean, eventually I get to it. Maybe because if y'all look at Bravo, one of the more popular shows on Bravo outside of the Housewives is Vanderpump Rules. That's from Lisa Vanderpump, who used to be on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She had a little spinoff that is now in its 10th season or something like that, 10th or 11th season. And so it got a little bit of entertaining and uh, a little bit more views this year, last season, because it came out that, um, <coughs> ooh. Excuse me. One of the um, cast members cheated on his partner that he was with for a while, right? And he cheated on her with the girl's friend, okay? That was also on the show. And somehow it became this big scandal, right? And on the one hand, I'm still trying to figure out why did it become so huge? Like, everybody in their mama was talking about it, you know? It really became so huge, and it was literally just this girl that got cheated on by a psychopath. That's just what it is, you know? Uh, a man child, because that's, uh, he's like 40 something years old, and he still acts like he's 12. Um, so, all of that happened. All of the stuff that's being shown on the new season had been played out 
before I even started filming or while I was filming and all on social media, YouTube and all that stuff. And I didn't seen it all. So that's probably why I'm just really not so gun ho to watch the new season as of yet. But eventually I get to it. He did, basically he's the villain of the show right now because of what he did to the girl. He did an interview, I think with the New York Times or somebody. And basically they asked him about the media coverage and how his scandal his cheating scandal how did it become so mainstream you know and he literally compared his cheating scandal to that of george floyd in the oj simpson trial and i said excuse me what and i was like in no world mind you this is still black history month this is still black history month you couldn't pick something else or you couldn't just say, I, I really don't understand how it got so big and how it became so mainstream. That's what you could have said. Okay. Instead of using two prominent black situations. Yes, they were mainstream. Yes, they had significant impact. And yet, and also both of them divided the country. Divided and united in a sense. Okay. And one was even more detrimental because one literally had his life taken by a cop. A black man had his life taken by a white cop. And you're going to compare because of the fact that so many people was talking about that. It's the same in comparison to people talking about your scandal of cheating. Some people are so fucking tone deaf and then some people do shit on fucking purpose and then they try to backtrack it. Some people let their prejudices, their bigotry and their racism show so much. And I'm like, what was the point of you saying that? What was the point? And I like to get people to talk about you, to get people to say stuff about you like, no, ain't nobody going to agree with that. You should have kept that shit to yourself. Or you could have used something else, bitch. Like, I'm so tired of people using George Floyd as a talking point or something to round the people up and to get attention on you. Like, this ain't the first time somebody didn't did that. Like, come on. Like, cancel that motherfucker. I just don't like him. I haven't. I never liked him since season one. But y'all tell me how y'all feel. George fucking Floyd. I know they fam. His family is tired. It's he's tired. Um. And speaking of the police department, New York's police department, I need y'all to define and debunk and disassemble that fucking dance team. They had that woman's, uh, <laughs> the woman's dance team that they had put on, they debuted them on the TV. I think it was the news or whatever. And they was up there dancing to, um, uh, what they said, uh, Flo Rida, one of Flo Rida songs, right? And first of all, y'all need some more steps. Y'all need some more, um practice because y'all y'all weak as hell y'all was weak as hell and people got in their feelings right away they was like so you mean to tell me this is what y'all doing over there in the nypd this is where our taxpayers money is going for this dance group or whatever that is so lame that is so weak and all that or whatever okay it was like they said that they got it so that they can relieve mental stress and all that stuff for mental health issues because of the demand of the job and the stress of the job of what they seen on the street. First of all, ain't nobody tell y'all to become a cop, so that's that. Second of all, you mean to tell me you're going to do a dance group? If you're going to do a dance troupe, don't get on TV and display it, all right? And y'all got matching uniforms or whatever that that's being paid for, probably by the NYPD uh, Foundation or whatever the fuck. Mind you, the mayor out here cutting costs and getting rid of programs and, you know, the, the, the what is it, cutting m millions of dollars from schools, from libraries, from, you know, um, sanitation, even the police department or whatever. You cutting all this stuff just, you know, like, what? The funds, it, it's just not, it's just not adding up, okay? <sighs> Get them people off my shop, off my um, TV, all right? Sit them down and put them in retirement and don't ever unretire them, okay? Put them on the disabled list forever. Moving on from that, Monique, Monique, Monique. An update 
to this whole situation between her and her son. And for those that want to say, oh, well, he the problem, he the problem, and he too old for this and all this stuff. Monique literally got up on stage after all this happened and basically lied and said that, you know, it was part of her bid that somebody at a, uh, the airport, because like somebody mentioned and said, pointed out, she always getting mad with somebody at the airport that's telling her this and telling her that. Like, ain't nobody at the airport stopping her and telling her that she needs to do this and needs to do that. This is part of her act. Trying to say that this 80-something-year-old woman basically said, you know, her daughter or whatever showed her the TikTok of what her son said and all that stuff. And what you need to do is fuck him. Okay? Fuck him. You know, he ungrateful. He this and all this stuff. And she was like, well, damn. So if you say fuck him, fuck them kids. And I'm just sitting here like, what? And actually, what was said was a lot worse than what I just said, in my opinion, and the way that she said it. And I know she meant it. That wasn't no comedy bit. And it's so crazy how it's people that still want to defend her and put the sun down and be like, well, because somebody literally did comment and say, no, he came at her putting out their business. So, no, let him cook, let him cook. No, it ain't no let him cook. All these years, we have not heard from him. You keep bringing him up. And that's when he said enough is a fucking enough and you're lying about the relationship. And therefore, he came out and put the truth out there according to him, which I tend to believe. Because I look at how she's responded both all three times. So it's not him that's not wanting the relationship. He was dead ass serious when he said that it's not it's her. They don't want to work on it. So, therefore, he comes to the conclusion he don't want to work on it either because it's not going to get them nowhere. And look at what's going on. She's proving that yet again. Okay? She just so... That wasn't the move, girl. That was not the move. You just got people on your side, bitch. Like, I don't know. Um. Anyway, moving on from that. Um... Condolences go out to Coco Brown, the actress. She used to play on For Better and Worse, Tyler Perry's For Better or Worse. She also played on um, Tyler Perry's The First Mom Club movie. She's an actress, 51 years old, has a 12-year-old son. Her house recently caught on fire because they said it might be due to a candle that uh, fell over into some clothes and they tried to put it out and it just spread or whatever. But her house is gone and now she has a GoFundMe of, that her friends put up for her for $50,000. And that just goes to show you can be up in this in certain businesses that you would expect people to have a good amount of money and insurance and all this stuff or whatever. And they don't have it. And they don't have it. She's an actress that's been in the business for years and she got to put up a GoFundMe. She got to put up a GoFundMe just for her to, to get help with rebuilding or getting another house or whatever. That's crazy. That's what they were striking for. That's what they were striking for, you know, and you that puts a lot of things in perspective. You know what I'm saying? That's so that's I, I hope they it just don't feel Tyler. She worked with you for years. Give her the 50. I'm sorry to put it out there like it ain't his responsibility, but I'm just saying, you know, make yourself look good. Do that. But um, NeNe leaks. You know what? I ain't even going to uh, put this on NeNe because it ain't even on NeNe. That is not her responsibility. Her son, Bryson, he has a child. One of the mother of his children is suing him and wanting him, not necessarily suing him, but want him to get thrown in jail. They came to a child support agreement that he was supposed to pay $708 a month with a child support. And I think it was supposed to start in, um, when was it supposed to start? In 2020. He has yet to pay. It's 2024. She said he owe like $30,000. And it's not that he can't pay. He don't want to pay. That's just what it is. And so now she wants his ass to get locked the fuck. You know? And at the end of the day, I don't even think it's about money at this point. It's about him trying to take responsibility for his child. And I feel as though the reason why she want him to get locked up and she doing this this way because he don't even see the baby anyway. That's what I feel. And I feel as though he needs to get locked the fuck up. Because he's not going to give that money. He probably ain't even got a job right fucking now as it is. We already seen the other troubles that he was on. You know, he's on drugs. And 9 out of 10, 
if he do get money, he probably is putting it on drugs or whatever. We seen what happened to him when he got locked up and all that stuff and doing the burglary or whatever, snooping around people, neighborhoods and homes and stuff. That's crazy, you know, and I don't want people to bring up Nene and say, well, she needs to do this and she needs to do that. Nene ain't got to do a goddamn thing because that ain't her responsibility. That is her son's responsibility. And if she do do something for that daughter, her granddaughter, which I'm pretty sure she does, that's because she wants to. She's not obligated to. That's because she wants to and because she loves her granddaughter. But when it comes to her son, she ain't got to do a damn thing for that man. And if he gets locked up, I don't want her to bail him out at all. Just like uh, she did when he got locked up the first time. Okay? Okay. That is not her responsibility. He needs to grow the fuck up and be a grown, uh, a fucking man, okay? And take care of his responsibility, you know? And, 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 and Sammy, go body her. <sighs> Girl. Girly, 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 girly. Now, people have said that this stuff about Simon that has come out... It's not new. It has been circulating a while, but it's the fact that it's now becoming news because he is trying to get like a national, become a national, a national, become a citizen of the United States. Immigration status is just being denied. I'm going I'm to read to you what was said. And it's a lot. That's why I'm going to read to you, you know, because I want to get it all. It said, according to reports, Real Housewives of Atlanta star. Portia Williams Gabadia's husband, Simon, is fighting to receive naturalization from the U.S. Recently, a federal court in Atlanta has turned down Gabadia's plea for U.S. citizenship, citing a history marred in criminality and deceit that reads more like the plot to a thriller than a citizenship application. Simon Gabadia's journey to the United States began in 1982, arriving as a child on a visa, a visitor's visa, However, this initial entry, rather than being the start of a straightforward immigrant tale, marked the beginning of decades-long saga of fraud and false identities. By 1991, after overstaying his visa, Gabadia found himself on the wrong side of the law and was ordered to be deported. The following year, in a move that would set the stage for later legal battles, he was physically removed from the United States. Bitch, they picked him up and threw him over the border. Whoa. Yet... The narrative did not end there, demonstrating the resilience of perhaps recklessness that would define his subsequent actions. Gabadia managed to re-enter the United States. He stepped right back over. He said, boop, there it is. This time under a different identity, Legion. <laughs> he was Legion before Legion was, okay? Legion had... Two social security numbers, bitch. Mind you, Legion had a twin brother. A twin brother who said he don't fuck with that nigga either. And everything that he said that he was doing, being the VP of this and the VP of that and having a wife and stuff, his twin brother was the VP in real life. Girl, legally and for real, legit. But anyway, um, through this new alias, he obtained a green card by fraudulent means, eventually becoming a permanent resident under the radar of immigration authorities. The layers of Simon Gabadia's past began to unravel further when it was revealed that his path to supposed uh, legitimacy was paved with multiple felonies, including bank fraud, credit card fraud, and identity theft. Bitch, is British Williams related to him? I don't know. Um, these revelations came to light during um, his application for U.S. citizenship, an application that would be denied not once but twice. Initially in 2016, Gabadi's attempt at nationalization was rejected due to his permanent residence status being unlawfully granted. Undeterred, he filed another application in 2020, only to face denial once again for not being lawfully admitted for permanent residence. In a final bid to overturn this series of rejections, Gabadia filed a complaint in 2023 asking the court to vacate the denial and grant him U.S. citizenship. However, this plea was dismissed in 2024 with the court pointing to his criminal past and illegal entry into the country as to insurmountable barriers to his claim. The decision of the federal court in Atlanta does not merely mark the end of a legal battle for Simon Gabadia, it underscores 
the intricate and often unforgiving nature of immigration law. Girl, goodbye to your case is a stark reminder of the consequences of fraudulent actions on the quest of citizenship, a quest that is for many fought with challenges, but ideally pursued through lawful means. For Portia's family, um, this ruling could cast a shadow over their future, raising questions about the implications of Gabadia's legal status on their lives in Atlanta. It also can thrust them into a center of public discourse on immigration, identity, and redemption, and topics that resonate far beyond the realm of reality TV. But they also said that he had um, marriage fraud, too. And I was like, what do you mean by that? So you illegally marrying people because you was a illegal person coming in using an illegal aliens or whatever? I don't know. They said the man was a scammer. They said the man was dealing with fraud and all this stuff. You know, and I want to know exactly what type of fraud besides the stealing of identities or whatever. Was he doing it to just stay in the United States? Or was he doing it to stay in the United States and do other illegal activities? That's what I need to be cleared up as well. But at the same time, I'm a little bit disappointed that this news is coming out like this. Because, again, it's giving Nigerians bad names. Um, and I hate to bring this up again, but it's just like they always have this um, stereotype about them about being scammers and stuff. Especially the men. Okay? Mind you... I'm not going to say all of them do that. Have I come across one? Yes, my aunt, my, not my aunt, my cousins, which is my mama's cousin, so therefore she my cousin. Aunt Rita, she got scammed by a Nigerian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think I spoke on that. That was her husband. He He did all this stuff, and it was just so foul what happened in that whole process. He played her. He used her. He did a whole bunch of dirty shit to her. And that still don't give me a negative perception of Nigerians, but this is a stereotype that they have of them of being scammers, and I hate it. And I know that the ones that don't do it, I know that they hate that too. And I'm like, damn, Simon, um, it's so crazy how you could do stuff in the past, whether you was doing it for a reason that wasn't supposed to be necessarily deemed as illegal, like you're just trying to stay in the country because you want to have a good life. Or you probably was doing some illegal stuff. I don't know. But either way, it's stuck with them. And you, I'm not surprised that they're doing all of this because look at the state of the country these days. And especially being the fact that immigration has been a hot topic. We already got the um, refugees coming over from Venezuela. You know, um, I know the immigrants coming over from Venezuela. We got a whole bunch of them out here in Chicago. I don't know if y'all got something where y'all stay at. Um, the only time that I realized that they were here was um, probably like for the past couple of months or so. We've been getting people coming to the job and they're asking, you know, to print out documents and stuff. And they're all Spanish speaking. So I couldn't understand them. So they're using their phone and Google Translate for us. And they don't understand English. And so we helped them out. And that's our only interaction with them. But it's a lot of them out here in Chicago from what I was told and what I looked up. But um, and somebody had asked me in a question a while ago, how, how has it affected me? It hasn't affected me. OK, because I don't interact with anybody. But at the same time, the only time we come across them and interact with them is when they come to the job and they're asking help to print out documents. Other than that, it's not affecting me. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not being forced to house people or anything like that. And even if we was, I mean, like, I can't get upset at the fact that they're here because of what they're escaping, you know? And it's messed up all the way around. But, you know, you, if you can help, help. Do what you got to do. But don't come over here doing some fucked up shit because some of them was getting in some trouble too, okay? But not all of them are bad people. Most of them are not. They're just scared. They're just in a place that they don't know of. They're trying to escape stuff that's going on over in their country, you know? And it's it's crazy. And all we got to do is be human and help, you know? Because um, honestly, I can't say how it's affecting other people. But if you ask them how it's affecting me, it's not affecting me, you know? We just help them out to print things out and point them in the right direction. And they're pretty nice, the ones that we I've come encounter with. So, hey, it's what it is. But 
I don't know. This situation with Simon, I feel like it's a little bit deeper than what it is. Um, and um, I hope they get it figured out. I hope it does not affect Portia in any negative way. I hope it does not affect her daughter in any negative way, you know. And um, hopefully we see it. I know it's so bad for me to say it like this. Hopefully we'll see it play out on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Girl, you got a story line on your ass now, baby. Mm, you thought you was going to avoid talking about Simon. Baby, you got to now, okay? You have to. Moving on from that. Last couple of things that I think that I got. Let me see. Yeah. First of all, traitors. Why is Sheree still on that show? Baby, Sheree is still on that show, and I am so confused. And I know she confused, too. I tell you this. If we was to sit down and ask Sheree, do you know what the show Traders is about? She probably wouldn't be able to tell us. She'd be like, girl, I'm just there to be there, okay? And that's all that she is giving. Because half the time, if Phaedra don't bring her up, I don't even remember and realize that she is there, okay? Because she is not vocal at all. She just literally atmosphere. But um, I'm going to say this. Trishelle, now I ain't saying the girl is racist or prejudiced or something, but it's quite funny that the majority of the people that she didn't brought up to be exiled or banished from the house, they all that she got her suspicion on, and it be the stupidest, smallest shit that she tried to make into a big thing that damn near everybody else has done, but you pointed out for the black people, it's a little suspicious. Because the way she did Peppermint, I said, uh-uh, Trisha, I didn't like the way you did that shit. You you flipped that shit so bad, and then you just kept on doing it, you dumb bitch. And then you tried to do that to Phaedra. Granted, she was correct about Phaedra being a traitor. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie. But I don't know. It was just the way that she was going about it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, was anybody else scared? I was a little nervous because I really thought Phaedra was out the paint, girl. I really thought they was going to kick her ass out. But, you know. She's still hanging in there for another day. I cannot believe that I like this show. And I like Phaedra on it. Bitch, put Phaedra on game shows. There you go. I don't, I don't care to see about her reality because her reality ain't really reality. It's fake as shit. Put her on fucking game shows, okay? And uh, have her manipulating people, whatever. Bitch, put Phaedra on Big Brother. I'll probably actually watch it, okay? I ain't never watched an episode of Big Brother a day in my life. Put her on Celebrity Big Brother and i see how she turned that house upside down. But um, anyway... One more thing. Y'all got into the new season of Love is Blind. Baby, do y'all realize this is season six? And I said, damn, bitch, I can barely remember all the seasons, okay? I don't really remember them. <laughs> I don't. Um, I remember last season, last season, I know Zach and Bliss, they're pregnant. They just had the baby shower, and just about the whole cast came to the baby shower. Um, what's the black boy that was on that... Um, that was in the whole thing with old girl that played him for the dude with the cauliflower ear who's no longer together. Him and his girlfriend that he had, they're now engaged to. I said, oh, Marshall, Marsh, Marshall. Him and his girlfriend, they are engaged. So he has a fiance. Um, I think the two black couple, the, the black couple are still together. And I mean, that's, that's probably like the most successful cast of Love is Blind. Uh, it was probably the most boring in season of Love is Blind, but it was the most successful in the sense that they had more than one couple get married and stay together. So that was cute. Congratulations to them. But make sure you check out my girl Tammy Talks because she reviews each every each episode individually of um, Love is Blind and she has them up right away. Um, three new episodes came out today and I have to watch them, but... Bay B. The people on this season, Matthew, psychotic. The way he came on and he was being so quiet and introverted or whatever. Okay, that's fine. But then the way that he was telling AD one thing and telling Amber the same thing. Baby, he was telling two girls the same thing, all right? And got caught up in it and left by himself. Then you get AD and um, Clayton. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for her. Let me tell you why. Because 
it's a good thing that she connected with somebody. We got a black couple out there. That's fine. I'm cool with that. But this ain't the guy that you need to be with. This man has already put out there that he a player. You know, he's into looks. He's into body. He's into being physically attractive or whatever. The fact that he asked her, you know, what, he, what she looked like, her body type, all that stuff. Mind you, this is a show called Love is Blind. So therefore, you're not supposed to know all of that. You are defeating the whole purpose of the show. If you wanted to know all of that, you should not be on the show. Go to a freaking grocery store and pick up somebody. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But um, he was putting out too many red flags. And she was just taking it. Like, she knew it. It's, it's giving very much Risa Tisa. You know the red flags and you are, um, you are just choosing to ignore them. You really are. And he gives play. Fuck boy tees, okay? He gives all of that. And when they finally match, if you haven't seen it, this is what's going on. Please cut it off. Cut off. Cut off. Cut off. Cut off. I just forgot to warn y'all. If you haven't watched, y'all can end the video right now. Have a good one. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy your weekend. Anyway, back to us. Um, when they finally match and she proposed he proposed and she said yes and they 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 met. He ain't all he did was was just looking at her body. Just looking at, he was all about her body. That's just it. And you want to know what else disgusted me when they all met on episode six, all of the couples met on episode six, and the way that they were just Googling and oogling and ogling over AD's body. I said, you ain't never seen somebody with an ass before. You ain't never seen somebody in shape with an ass before. It gave me, and I tweeted this, it gave me Sarah Barton tease. And y'all know who Sarah Barton is, right? The black woman, the black African woman, um, who was basically put on display as a fucking circus freak, that's they want to call it, you know, and because of her large ass, you know, back in slavery days. That's what they was giving. That's what they was giving. It was all white people that was oogling and ogling over her ass. And then Jimmy talked about some. Oh my God, she stacked. Bitch, Jimmy. Jimmy desires everything that he gets. Chelsea desires everything that she gets. Let me tell you something. Jimmy, you was, uh, what's that? What's that? What's that? He was, um, that girl, Jessica. Jessica shouldn't have been on the show. I'm going to just tell you this. Jessica shouldn't have been on the show because she was more so concerned about her child. And I feel like this is not a situation for a person who has a 10-year-old child or a child in general. Somebody got a flat tire. Imagine I got the window open. It is, it's, it's warm up in here. I ain't finna touch the heat because I don't know if the heat gonna go up or down. I'm talking about the weather outside. So I got the window open crack and somebody got a flat tire. But Jessica was too concerned about her goddamn child. And every time we got to the, um, they got to the pods and they was talking or whatever, it, her child got brought up. At first, she didn't even want to bring up her child right away. And then she brought it up. And I feel like as soon as he found out that she had a kid, and not only just a kid, but a 10-year-old too, um, and he just he just stopped really liking her like that. But when she said, you're going to need a, ep a, what is it, a EpiPen when you see me <laughs> for not choosing her. Because <laughs> he was playing her. He was acting like he didn't know that he didn't want to be with her. You did not want to be with her as soon as she said she had a kid. And then you chose Chelsea. Chelsea, bitch, I don't want to be with somebody that has the... She did. She said she was going to throw up with somebody or whatever. Uh-uh. Don't talk to me like that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Chelsea lied and told that man that she looked like Megan Fox. Bitch, when he saw her, he said, well, she lied. She don't look like Megan Fox. But, you know, looks not. It don't matter or whatever. And as soon as he saw that she didn't look like what he, uh, what she said he, uh, she looked like, he became disinterested. He don't like that girl. And when they went on their little vacation or whatever, and she kept on saying, do you like me? Do you love me? You still love me? You this, you that, whatever. Asking all these questions and being so insecure. I cannot stand that. If It's one thing to be insecure outside of a relationship, but once you get into a relationship, make sure you have that shit fixed, okay? You can't keep on asking a person, do you want me? Do you want me? Do you want... Bitch, at that point, I'm going to say no. Okay? At that point, I'm going to say no. I'm going to need them to break up, Okay? Um, and then the black guy with the white girl, and he said that's his first black, his first white woman. I guess and they say they're going to wait before marriage or wait till marriage. They the type of people that wait till marriage. Okay. 
And who else they got? That other guy where the girl told her to bean dip um, AD. I had to look up what bean dip meant because at first I was about to say, what you trying to say? Because it felt a little racial. You know, we in Black History Month and we don't need to be going through all this stuff. I looked it up on UrbanDictionary.com and it basically means to flip somebody titty. Okay? Flip somebody titty or fat. You know, and I was like, oh, my God, why would you do that? And even he said, why would you do that? Why would you want me to do that to somebody else? That just don't make sense. A lot of these couples are not going to last, okay? Y'all are in for a world of hurt. And I haven't even looked at the last three episodes that they put out today. But, um, yeah, if you've been watching it, how do you feel about it? Put it in the comments. We'll talk. And um, y'all enjoy the rest of your week. Be safe. And um, I will see you guys later. Peace.